attack? This is an art attack. This is art attack. <laughs> centuries, man has uncovered the mysteries of ancient Egypt. Tombs have been raided, forbidden treasures have been plundered, and now the ancient sarcophagus has finally been opened to reveal the mystical burial mask of Tut and Cardboard. No, I don't mean Tut and Carmen, I mean Tut and Cardboard, because it's made from a load of old Tut and Cardboard. <laughs> Come and have a look at this. <laughs> now, to make your own Tutton cardboard, first you need to take a cheap old plastic mask. You've seen these, the type you may have lying around from a party or something. And you can get them from joke shops, party shops, pound shops. And you can stuff some scrunched up newspaper behind it to make it a bit more solid. And it might be a good idea to let some paper just poke over the top to complete that sort of oval head shape. It depends on what type of mask you can find. Then holding the paper in place at the back, just tape the whole of the mask and paper down onto a big piece of cardboard box card. And it's just a case of tucking the paper in behind that mask there and sticking plenty of tape down. But you know the form by now. And I've never got enough time on Art Attack to show you how to do this properly. So I'm doing it quickly. You put loads of tape on that. Next, you need to take some more tape and just tape it over the eye holes to close them up. One there and one there, and finally, a bit of tape over the mouth, and you can do the nostrils as well. Then when you've done that, you need to take an empty chocolate box. Now, you've seen these as well, one of these that's narrower at one end than the other. Then cut it in half lengthways, and place the halves either side of the face, so that the narrow ends are at the top, about level with the forehead. See, round about there like that and then tape these into place. Again, you use loads of tape. I've got to do it really quickly to show you. Then you need to scrunch up some more newspaper and use it to join the top of the box on this side to the top of the box on the other, going all the way across the top of the head like that. And again, tape everything into place. Then scrunch a little twist of newspaper to create a sort of snake. Shape. Now, I know you're saying, that's not a snake shape, it is. It's like a cobra look. And I put loads of tape on that, and that will go into position on the forehead. And I'm just placing all these into place to show you. And then just scrunch up another bit of newspaper into a sort of pointy cone for the chin. And the idea is to line all these bits up in the place that you want them. And then, yes, you know the form. Stick loads of tape on there, tape all the corners, all the edges, all the gaps, all the holes, and when you've done it, you will have something that looks like this. Look at that. And everything is really now quite smooth, and there's no gaps, there's no holes, but there's loads of tape. Next, you need a big brush to cover the whole thing in PVA glue, and it's just a case of slopping the glue on like that. Look at that, nice and messy. <laughs> I love these sort of artifacts. And just slop your glue all over the mask and the cardboard and the tape. And just brushing it on like this with a nice big brush. Get it into all those nooks and crannies. And when you've got the whole thing covered in glue, just take some sand and sprinkle it all over your mask. And the idea is to make sure you cover everything. All those nooks and crannies, all that paper sculpture, all that tut and cardboard. In fact, all the glue. <laughs> there it is. And when you've covered the whole thing in sand, just let it stand for a while. 
to let the sand sink into the glue. And then, just gently tip off the excess sand, and look at this, your tut and cardboard has turned into an ancient sand-covered relic. And then just leave it to one side to dry thoroughly, and when it's dried, you can paint it. Now you can use poster or acrylic paint for this, and the idea is to paint some blue stripes and bands around the headdress, like this. Don't paint the whole thing, you just want a few stripes like this, and it doesn't matter if the paint doesn't go on too thick, it all adds to the effect, as if the paint has been worn away over the years. Go all the way round, and when you've done it, it'll look like this. Look at that. And there it is. And it really does look authentic, as if it's thousands of years old. Try it yourself. Create your own ancient Egyptian burial mask using a load of old tut and cardboard. I think that is amazing. <laughs> Who'd have thought that you could create such a mystical ancient burial mask out of a load of tooth and cardboard? <laughs> Hello, it's me, the head here. Now, when you're making yours and you've covered everything with glue, don't forget you must leave the sand on for a little while before you tip it off. And don't worry if you didn't catch all of that because you can check out the website for fact sheets on this art attack and all the others in the show. Whoa! See if you can guess what this big art attack is.
When you're drawing cartoons or creating your own cartoon characters, one of the most important things is style. Your own style, your own gimmick. You know, lots of cartoonists have created their own style, something about their drawings that has their own trademark. They may give their characters big noses, or funny shaped heads, or even make them weird colours. Now, it's great fun to do. Just try it yourself. Just pick one strange feature and try to draw lots of characters using that one gimmick. So, okay, here's a gimmick. How's about all my characters have sticky out, poppy out eyes? So let's see if it works. Let's see if it works for a horse. Okay, there's the sticky out, poppy out eyes. And let's draw the rest of the horse around the eyes. Put in some ears there. And <laughs> see, it's starting to create a character unlike any other character you've seen, actually. <laughs> this is quite funny. Let's bring the legs around here. So doing something like this, doing something like your own gimmick, it forces you into a certain style. There you go. Look at that. Yep, that works. Brilliant. OK, let's try it with something else. Let's try it. Let's try it with a dog. There's the sticky out, poppy up eyes. And I think I'm going to give the dog a real shaggy coat, like that. And there's his mouth. I'm just going to do his tongue hanging out the side there. What about his ears? OK, so there's the eyes. I've got to put the ears here now. Still shaggy. Look at that. And I'll give him four paws down here, like that. And he's on all fours, this dog. And there's his tail sticking up again, a shaggy tail. So that works. And they look as if they're from the same family almost. OK, let's see if it works with something more obscure. How's about... Oh, I know. Let's try a shark. Let's see if this works. This is more difficult. I've never seen a shark with sticky out eyes of you. So around there like that. And put his tail in. And a fin there. Another fin there. And... I'm just delaying it and playing for time here because I don't know whether this is going to work. Let's see. You never know if it's going to work right till the end. Watch this. <laughs> it's brilliant, yeah. So not only does it work well for all of the characters, but they all look as if they have their own style because they all have the same gimmick. So, OK, let's try it again. Let's see if the gimmick works with cartoon people. Here's the eyes. I'm quite pleased with that. It's good. Good idea, that. Poppy out eyes. Here's the sticky out eyes. <laughs> Let's see if it works for people. So I'll start by drawing a little girl. There she is. Let's see. Now these should all look as if they come from the same family because they've got the same gimmick. Now what shall I do with the hair? I'm just going to do it out there like that. <laughs> it's great. Yeah, that's good. Okay, let's try the little boy. See what happens there. Again. Give him goofy teeth like that. And let's see, what should I do on his head? I know, I'll give him a, a baseball cap there on the back. Yeah, they look as if they're brother and sister. That's good. Let's see if it works with an older person. There you go, give him a nice droopy face. Uh, a couple of lines around his nose, like that. Let's see if this works. <laughs> It's great. It's really good fun to do this, because you don't know how they're going to come out. Just invent a gimmick. It's brilliant. I think I'll give them some glasses there. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> it works well, all with this funny gimmick. The eyes are all popping out of their heads. Brilliant. Great fun to do. Try it yourself. Invent your own gimmick to create cartoon characters in your style. Oh, what a great art attack. Invent your very own style, like eyes that pop out, and use this on all your cartoon characters. Hey, I did something a bit like that yesterday. Do you want to see it? I call it eyes popping out of the head. Eyes popping out of the head. Get it? <laughs> Hang on, hang on, hang on, not ready, not ready, hold on a sec. There's a couple of bits of artwork I wanted to show you. Oh, here they are, there you go. A couple of things that you've sent in, and they're fantastic. Have a look at this. 
Jasmine's artifact was created by sticking squares of paper on green sugar paper, covering them with tracing paper and blowing ink around them with a straw. Luke's still life has been done with bold crayon outline, which has been carefully painted with watercolours to give a nice stylized effect. And Shannon has used vibrant oil pastels in a simple graphic image for her pop art pineapple picture. Sana's swirly abstract painting has been completed in blues, purples and reds. I really like the way she's used the corrugation of the car to add to the effect. And Nicola's got the composition just right with this delightful still life. I love the way she's used light and shade to create the flowing contours. And here's a great technique from Victoria, bubble printing. It reminds me of a marbled effect. So, okay, Victoria, how is it done? I added ink to soapy water. And made some bubbles by blowing through a straw. Next I took a piece of paper and laid it on the bubbles to make my print. Hey, see, now all of the art attacks you send in to me are fantastic, but I particularly wanted to show you that one because I love the technique, printing from bubbles. And you know, when it comes to bubbles, the more bubbles the better. <laughs> Try this, squeeze a generous amount of washing up liquid into a bowl. Now it's a good idea to ask before you do this one and add some cold water and then roll up your sleeve to swish it around so you've got plenty of bubbles in the bowl. And when you finish frothing lots of bubbles up, you'll need some inks or even food colouring in different colours. And the idea is to dribble a few different colours onto the surface. So here we go. Let's start with some green. Shaking it on like this. There it goes. In the middle. And then perhaps some red, like that. God, that looks like a piece of art already, doesn't it? Look at that. Brilliant. And try and be as quick as you can doing this so that the bubbles don't disappear. And the idea is to take a piece of paper and lay it onto the surface of the bubbles, like this. And then carefully remove the paper from the bowl and place it face up on a sheet of newspaper or plastic carrier bag to dry. Now, if you want, you can froth up more bubbles and add more of the same coloured inks to take more than one print. But if you want to try a bubble print with different colours, it's best to start again. Froth up the bubbles like this and then pour in some different colours. So on we go. Again, look at that. Creating another work of art. I think that looks brilliant in itself. And another colour here, I think. Like an orange. Ooh. It's fairly mean, isn't it? Look at that. And then lay your piece of paper on the top. And let's see what happens. There it goes, just gently pressing it into the bubbles. And the great thing is, you never know what sort of print you're going to get. It's completely out of control. It's in the hands of the bubbles. And carefully lift it off, and again, lay it to one side to dry. Oh, look at that. And it's a brilliant technique, because on this one, the bubbles are smaller. I've got double bubbles, and they come out different every time. Now, when the sheets are dry, you can use them to do loads of different things. Look at this. They make fantastic backgrounds for you to draw on. Look at this. It's a real fairy tale picture. Or you could even cut out a silhouette and stick it onto your bubble print. Really dramatic picture. Or you could even use it to cover picture frames. Or even greeting cards. And how about some gift wrapping paper? Brilliant. And don't forget, you can check out the website for fact sheets on this and all the other art attacks in the show. Go on then, try it yourself. Double bubble printing. <laughs> and I'll see you next time. Ta-ra! And Art Attack will be on same time next week. I've got an email here which says, Hi Leah and Lee, can I say hi to Lynn, Mike and Millie in Sharnbrook in Bedfordshire. They love Art Attack and will be doing some of their own this weekend. That's love from Matt. Hello. Hello. Yes, we have asked you what you've been getting up to this weekend. We've got one here from James who's looking after his mum all weekend because she's ill. Bless. Oh, what a shame. Coming up next today, it's a tour by Ginger. School is officially closed. Yeah. <laughs>